Hi everyone, my name is Griffin Renaro. I am a mechanical engineering student in the Hyperlab and I currently work on the core team. Um, today I'm going to show you how I edit videos for our YouTube channel um, in hopes for the rest of the team and for other people around the world to kind of learn how we put together our engineering videos. So the project I'm working on today is actually a new lab intro video. This past weekend, we had the team leads of all of our teams come in and present a 30 second clip about what it is they do in the lab. So right now I'm just kind of sifting through all the footage we gathered. Uh, we had two shots of every person, um, but also we had an issue with our audio. So what we had the people do is they have their phone on their laps in this shot and they actually just recorded a voice memo on their iPhones. So then afterwards I would silence the audio on the video that I put into the software and just replace it with the audio that they sent me, which they recorded on their phone. This kind of helps just like because we weren't able to have a microphone in this video. This makes the audio a lot more clear and gets rid of a lot of the background noise. The software that I use is Adobe Premiere Rush. Um, this software is typically free. Um, I know Adobe kind of does some weird trial things online, but I've found that you can typically always find like a three month free trial every three months. So that makes it free. Um, in the past, I've used Adobe Premiere Pro. That one is a little bit more high tech um, and definitely harder to use. Um, I'm familiar with the software, but it definitely took me a long time to become familiar with it. Um, I would not recommend using iMovie. Um, iMovie just has very basic titles and basic editing skills. Um, so when you kind of make your video, it looks very much like you made it in iMovie. Um, I found in Adobe Premiere Rush, you have a lot more freedom to move things around, to design your own titles. Um, and I just think that it's honestly the easiest and cheapest software to use. So I'm going to edit more of this video. And once I'm kind of done, I will come back and show you guys what my next steps are. All right, now that I have kind of edited some of the video, um, I've actually gone and collected some clips. I uh, texted Reese Adams, who is in the shot currently, um, to send me as many photos and videos he had of his experiment craft. Um, and I actually just layered them on top of the main footage. So this is known as B-roll. So it's just kind of photos that aren't really important to the shot, but they're just kind of playing in the background. Um, and a general rule for these is you don't want to make a photo or a frame show up for less than four seconds. Um, this is because if it's less than four seconds, it can be seen as too fast. So the viewer can't really catch all the details. Um, However, if you want to add transitions, you have to account that into fact. So for a lot of these videos, I have tester or craft, which is one of the first I kind of testers. put like a zoom effect on those. And that's kind of that's known as the pan and zoom. Um, so I put that in there. So there is a little bit of movement because kind of any pretty pretty much any movement is good movement. Um, so these transitions are put into play and I make them 0.5 seconds at the beginning and the end. Um, I like to use the dissolve for the main effect, but occasionally I'll use a uh, fade to white. Um, it's just kind of a little more flashy, but not too distracting. Um, but overall, each photo is about six seconds. So it's a little bit more than the four seconds, but still enough time for the transition and adds movement to the frame. I've also put in a title frame. Um, so I always put the name um, and what they are in the lab. So Reese is a material science engineering graduate student. Um, and a shadow on a text is also one of your best friends. So as you can see, this bar right here is kind of white. Um, and the text I chose is white, which is always like a good color to use. Um, but the white on the silver doesn't show up super well. Um, and because like there's changing colors throughout the frame, um, you don't want to make like the text different colors throughout the line itself. So adding just like a black shadow um, and changing the distance and kind of manipulating that can really help your text pop a little more and just make it easier to read. Where we last left off, I was editing Reese's video. Um, since then, I've now added an introduction to our video. Um, but what I like to do at the beginning of every video I post on the YouTube channel is I like to add a logo of the university I'm at. So here is Washington State University. Um, and also at the end of the video, I like to kind of put like a little end card that says like, uh, for more information, follow us um, and subscribe here. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and play that for you guys and show you what it looks like.
So that's kind of the introduction of the video and the conclusion. Um, how I made this was I actually made a brand new project and I added all the things I wanted to have in the video and I just put them side by side. Um, so that way I could export that project and I could just throw it into every other project I have. So that way I'm not constantly having to retype everything. So from here, I will go to where the beginning ends, find the very end by just using the sidebar and I'll cut it using this button right here. And I'm just gonna delete this for now, but now I just have this and I can throw in a transition. and looks just like that. All right, so I'm not quite done, but I've got a pretty good layout of how I want the video to go. I have my B-roll laid over my main footage and I've got most of the audio synced up from people's recordings. Um, the next step is, do I want to include some sort of music in the video? There's a lot of different options for this. Um, for this video in particular, because it's just an intro video, um, I think that adding a little bit of music, just making it quiet, just kind of drowns out some of the silence between people talking. Um, adding music though to every video is not always the best choice. Sometimes it kind of it can detract away from what the person is saying. For example, when we do our team interviews or our graduate student showcase videos, I choose not to add music in those just because that's more of a conversation and just more of the learning in particular. But for an intro video, we do want to kind of reel people in there and it's not so much as like an informational video, it's more of just a showcase of what we're doing. So I am gonna to choose to add music into this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go onto YouTube um, and I'm just gonna type something as simple as background music for videos. And really what I do is I just try and find a song that has a mellow beat, um, nothing that can get really loud and really quiet, but is consistent throughout the entire song. That way I don't have to fiddle as much with changing the volume at every part. Um, but this can sometimes take a while because there's a lot of background music and not all of them will fit with your video. So just be sure it fits the vibe of your video before throwing it in there. So now that I found the song that I'm going to use in the video, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to YouTube or Bing and I'm just going to type in YouTube MP3 converter and I'll just click on a link and then I'm going to copy and paste the link from this video and I'm just going to throw that in there. I'll click convert. And then once it's done converting, then I can just download that onto my computer. Now that I have it downloaded on my computer, I can go into my files and just throw that in there pretty easily. So I've got that. Mine is the up, upbeat and happy pop background music. Um, so don't be deceived by the name. All right, I got that thrown in there. I find it best to put it at the very bottom of all your other audios, just because then it can mess with how the other audios are synced already. Because in this case, because I had people recording their phones on just like the voice memos, I had to throw that in there and I had to re rearrange it to fit with the video. So I, I obviously don't want to mess with that. So I'm just going to put the music at the very bottom. So that way I just know that that's where the music goes and I can put voice memos and other sounds above that. Now is the time to check if the music is too loud or too quiet. So I'm just going to play a little bit of the video and see how it lines up with other people's voices. Hi, my name is Grace Simonton. I'm a sophomore in material science engineering, and I'm here at the Hydrogen Properties for Energy Research. So it's a little loud um, and I can't really hear Grace's voice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the sound right here. And I made sure I clicked the music and I'm just gonna bring this down to like 40. Um, and let's just try it now. Hi, my name is Grace Simonton. I'm a sophomore in material science. That's a little bit better. Um, I could also uh, play around with bringing up Grace's voice or the other person's voice, um, but for now, I'll probably just keep messing around with the music and we'll see where we go from there. All right, and last we left off, I was putting in the music. So now that I have the music adjusted to the right volume and upped some of the volume of people's clips, um, some final things to note when making a video is how long should it be um, and when you should post. I like to plan ahead um, for about once a week for a video. Some weeks are slower than others, some weeks are faster than others, but. Typically, I try to keep it about once a week. 
Um, another tip is for this video in particular, um, I would use Zoom to screen share and then record. So I could just go on to the website that I was looking at and just scroll through that. And it would just be a nice way to screen share. I know that some devices like Macs or even Microsoft project products sometimes make it a little difficult to screen record your screen. Um, so just using Zoom and then saving the file somewhere onto your computer, you can then just throw that into your video and it should be good to go. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a video. My only hope is that you utilize some of these tips into your own video so you can make the most out of every video. Thanks for watching.